Welcome to Broadish. I'm Felicia Madison, along with our co-host Holly Harper and Jocelyn Chia. And with us today, we have Sean Rosa, Boston comedian. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we're going to discuss breaking news in the comedy community. <laughs> JFL just <laughs> yeah. your I love it. The comedy community. It. It's like a little village. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little village. Yeah, a little controversy going on. Jeff Singer resigned from JFL um, due to his apparent or alleged bad behavior, innocent till proven guilty. Um, but he was called out by Mehran Kanyani, who we coincidentally were talking about for his bullying behavior just last week. Right. Uh, are we like prescient or what? We did it before anyone else. And with us today, we have Sean Rosa, who just posted on his Twitter an incident that he had with uh, Mehran last year. Oh, I gotta get up on this. Do you want to tell us about it, Sean? Tell us about it, Sean. Tell us. Sure, sure. I'll 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 tell you about it. Um, I had a uh, dust up, if you will. Not not really, but um, I had an incident with with Mayron in. I want to say, yeah, October of 2018. I remember it because the Red Sox were in the World Series that year, <laughs> and yeah, and um. It was at the the comedy studio, uh, which is this. Um, it's a, a wonderful club that is um, fantastic. It had recently moved to a new location, and okay, so Maron was there uh, for the whole weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I was there on Friday and Saturday. Um, Friday, uh, he comes in like a house of fire and just you know. You know, it's just completely just just so rude and, and mean to everyone involved with the show and the bar staff. Uh, there is a, a wall of fame, if you will, uh, with names of a bunch of people who uh, contributed to um, funding the club's new location and having it built and and providing financial support. It has people's names like Eugene Merman, Mike Birbiglia, Gary Goldman, uh, people like that. And Mehran came up, looked at the wall, saw that his name wasn't on it, which I'm pretty sure is because he didn't contribute. Uh, <laughs> and, and just confronted the owner about it uh, and just was really just an asshole to everyone. So Saturday comes and it's the next night, and he got, he basically, all the other comics that were on the show the night before, he, like, gathers us into the green room and is just like, okay, uh, like, to kind of, like, explain, sla justify, slash, maybe apologize for his behavior the night before. And is like, um, the, what he said was, uh, we're not going to turn this into a Louis C.K. situation. A we? Oh, now yes. it's a we. I love the <laughs> we. We, as I'm in, not gonna as, me. in, as in, we are not going to get him canceled. And as a joke to alleviate the tension, I said, we can lock the doors right now and turn this into a Louis C.K. situation. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. That's a good one. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the show goes on. I go up. Um, I do my set. My set goes fine uh not not great but not i'm not eating it uh during the show during my set um one of my friends who is the bar manager uh for the for the bar um who's a good friend of mine accidentally hit the light switch causing the house lights to go up and you know they they were on for like you know two seconds and then back down but i like had to address it and it was really awkward for a second so I go back to the green room and I'm talking with like a couple other comics about it. And like, just like, it was really weird. And Mehran comes barging in and like, hears that I'm talking about it. And is like, oh, don't blame that for why you bombed, you know, just like, <laughs> oh, you know, you, you just didn't bring it or whatever. Oh my God. He, yeah. And I was just like, oh, okay, whatever, man. And then he like, he like kind of like squares up to me and he's like, trying to give me like this motivational pep talk. Like you gotta, 
you got to whatever that energy you felt out there, you got to use this to motivate you to be a better comic and all this and let it drive you. And as he's saying that, smacks me in the face. Holy and, shit. And walks out cackling. Ah! And then I like, I just take a seat. Cause I'm just like shaken up at this point and like Cause you're freaked it, out. I'm freaked out. Yeah, and like I'm like out. I'm like kinda like laughing to myself, like what what the fuck is going on? And like the other comics in the room are like, Oh my god, are you okay? And yeah. he just he he he's like in the hall, like doubled over laughing, stops, pokes his head back in the green room and says, Oh, by the way, if you tell anybody about this, I'll ruin your career. Mm. Okay, he needs to be. Let me tell. Okay, he needs to be. You catch his ass in the men's room, and you need to barge it on his ass and just wail. Because I'm like, no, no, he needs to be snuck. Because somebody who does that little sneaky bullshit, that's what they need. I cannot believe that. That is so. That is so foul on so many levels. Yeah. Holy. You got to get him back, though. Like, you really do. Like, no, you got to oh. get him back. Oh, I, I'm working on it. Uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying my best, and I hope that it, whatever I'm doing right now, uh, sticks. What are you doing to get back? Oh, I'm just, just telling people my story and uh, hoping that other people tell their stories. A lot of other people have shared public me or publicly or with me privately uh similar interactions and even worse wow uh, well what's yeah. interesting is that you know he was the one that called out jeff singer for his horrible behavior <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's so like crazy. that's the the kettle calling the pop black is that the expression i never yeah. really got the i never got the term right yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I gave up. like like oh they're both Black, are they? I don't know. <laughs> do, do, do they come in different colors? Who knows? On one hand, you know, horrible his behavior. On the other hand, he had the balls, at least, to call out Jeff, which no one else has done. Singer could have done nothing for him anymore. He was not burning any bridges with Jeff. Jeff was never going to book him. So I don't think that was balls. What is the situation with Jeff, though? Because, I mean, I do have to take a look at... Because we were um, talking about the N-word. Like, we were talking about the yeah. N-word, you know? And was a situation where he was using it or was somebody saying it and he was repeating it back? I'm just he, trying to understand the repeating, context. He was repeating a joke that someone said that had the N word in it. Um, and apparently what happened was he said the joke and then people addressed him and said, you know, that's not right. You shouldn't be doing it. And then he doubled down and said, you know, I can, you know, that's ridiculous. I don't know exactly what he was saying, but he wasn't like apologizing and saying, oh, you're right. Maybe I shouldn't be using that word. But it, it was sort of, that was the straw that broke the camel's back because um, there's also been a lot of other things that he's done that have been bad. Um, that There's just so many things I want to discuss yeah, here. There's I, the N word. There's the fact that he's, been misogynistic with women and yet that didn't that wasn't enough it wasn't until this happened that he got it's never enough with misogyny women because like you guys can't take a joke or you're too sensitive or this is why women can't be in comedy or you know some kind of nonsense um i've i've seen a lot of discussion about it on twitter and a lot of women sharing their stories about like weird misogynistic things that jeff singer has said about you know, them or their act or the way that they were dressed on stage. Just really awful stuff. And I'm really glad that um, people are are coming forward about that stuff and holding uh, people in the industry like that accountable. And I think there, that we definitely need more stuff like that. However, I think we also need to have that uh, be coming from uh, people who are acting in good faith, you know, uh, i.e., not Mayron. Seriously, if he, sla if he slapped me though, I'm having him arrested. Like if he's, if it's, it's, I don't care, man or woman, if you hit me, I'm having you yeah. arrested. I'm having you oh, arrested. Oh, the worst, I the am. Wor the, the, we, you could argue that this is the worst part. In his apology to me, uh, he was like, oh, I only, you know, I, I, I just did it because I thought you were a, a good comic and, you know, uh, and I only I only do stuff like that to people I like, and it's like, 
Fuck no, you don't. Like you, you like you. Oh, you only do that to people you respect in comedy. Like no, you do that to people you can get away with doing it to. Like that's like I only rape the women I find pretty. I only rape the women I find pretty. Yeah, like you wouldn't do that to Jen Kirkman or Mike Birbiglia or Eugene Merman. You wouldn't. You 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 probably admire them, but you wouldn't treat them the same way that you treat me because you know that I'm a nobody. I'm right. I'm somebody who has no clout and can't get you anything and can't uh, do anything damaging to your career, relatively speaking. Yeah, well, that's so, what happened with Jocelyn. Yeah, that's exactly what happened with me. He didn't know who I was, and I'm a professional comedian in the New York scene. I met all, most of the clubs in the city, but I'm not at the cellar where he is a regular at, so he didn't recognize my face. So I'm hanging in the cellar. And he sees these fans coming up to me uh, from a different show, not from the seller show. And I didn't recognize that they came from a different show. So I thought they were here for guys like Mehran and other comics that I was hanging out with. But when they turned to me, he's like, no, you, Jocelyn, we saw you at this show and we think you're great. Can we buy you a drink, et cetera? What's your Instagram? Mehran then turns on me and is like, how long's Jocelyn been doing comedy for? You know, why, why she's a she's she doesn't belong to the cellar. Why is why is a stray cat hanging out here in the cellar? She, you know, you're a nerd. I don't like you. Et cetera. And he just starts verbally abusing me to the point that a, a male comic had to be like, hey, <laughs> you're being a B-A-N and you're being a misogynist. And the male comic was like, I think he's picking on a vulnerable target that he knows he can attack because he sees you as a soft target. He would have never done this to a guy. Now we know he would have done it to a guy totally. And he would have never done it to a black person. But yeah, he's picked these like soft, vulnerable targets to attack because he thinks that like, we can't do anything about it. That's what we call a bully. That's not exactly. And I, I pecked him as a bully that now like, he has like very strong bully energy. And then I, I guess I wasn't surprised. I felt very justified to hear Sean's story, a bunch of other people's stories. Someone had a story about how Mehran like gripped his neck and threatened yeah. to snap. Wow. Yeah. But you know what? Someone like that, I mean, I know it's me seem like I don't know this person, but people who do that, one day they eventually mess with the wrong person. Right. You know what I mean? Like you hear about someone who's getting shot in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I know you shouldn't laugh about that, but it's like you ever hear about someone like, I can't believe, you know, there's a history. They've been messing with people and they mess with the wrong person. I think he's going to mess with the wrong person one day. Well, and he's going to hear with his ass on the floor of the cellar for for getting physical with Sherrod Small. <laughs> well, that was funny. I wish I could have seen that. <laughs> that was pretty wow. funny. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would have been quicker with the phone, Jocelyn. You should have got a pic. God <laughs> damn, that could be so good on Instagram. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at that. Oh my God, these two guys that, that got a fight in the cellar over little old me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the first time that happened to you, Jocelyn. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's interesting. It's sad because I hear stories about this all the time, uh, whether it's in the comedy world or not in the comedy world, people bullying women, saying bad things like apparently Jeff said. Uh, and it, it's sad that women tend to not, men, I guess, too, because Sean, you kept it in for a while. We don't feel comfortable or confident enough to speak up. Like I have someone that's yeah. going through a similar issue and they're afraid for their career. So what does it take mm -hmm. to get people to have the courage to talk out and speak up before it becomes years of torture? Yeah, I actually, um, I mentioned in my post that I had never brought it up, at least publicly, uh, because I was genuinely scared that he could ruin my career. And I posted my post and earlier someone asked me, they were like, oh, how come you, you're you waiting until now to do it? How come you didn't do it two weeks ago? It's like, probably because I wasn't watching the entire comedy world, you know, hoist this guy up as a hero, or at least some people in the comedy world. I, I would definitely believe a lot of the things that people are saying about, about Jeff Singer, if they're coming forward about them. Uh, and I, I encourage, um, you know, more people to come forward about other people in positions like that. But, you know, we can do that without without Mehran. And there's no reason for any of us to feel like he's in any way necessary for a mass movement like that of comedians fighting back against the power system. My guess is the two things that take that get people to finally say something are one when they have no more skin in the game. 
right? They, they left comedy, they gave up, they, they can't be bothered anymore. Then they can tell the truth or you get enough power. Like Jen Kirkman had a vendetta against Jeff Singer, as you can tell from her tweets, because Jeff Singer had told her she was shit back in the 90s. And so now that she is, you know, she's a Netflix star and she has her own book and she's a much bigger comedian. Now she can go hard at him uh, because she has much more clout now than back then when she was hoping that Jeff was still going to book her. Let's go back to um, the N-word because I know <laughs> I know we were, we discussed this a little bit last week and this week, but um, he, Jeff Singer, obviously, this is what the button that really pushed Mehran that he called him out and caused this whole thing. It was his using of this word. And we were sort of having a side discussion as to, <laughs> you know, should the N-word be used by anyone? I mean, if it's such a negative, derogative, horrible word I, fi I find every time i say the n word it's kind of like saying the f word it's like really what's like the, f f word? The, the f word the oh. f word oh oh okay i'm like <laughs> i use it so much i'm like the f word what's the i f know word? and it's silly it's like you you know what like, i don't think we should even Wait, be which saying, f word <laughs> we shouldn't it's even be up. saying like to me saying the n word is as bad as saying the n word pretty much why why is it such a term of endearment for like, I feel like it's used um, sometimes by the people that can use it as a term of endearment. And I, I just like want to know why, why that is like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I grew up with people saying it and not saying it. You know what I mean? And I, you know, I don't think it's anybody's place to police black people and what they can say right. when they've gone through this uh, horse shit of white supremacy. That said, I don't, th I don't think I, okay. When I see, whenever I see white people say, why can't we say it? Why do you want to say it? <laughs> like, why do you want to say it? Like I was telling you on, on a thread either day on a text thread, I have a Latino friend that uh, called somebody S P I C. And I was like, what? It shocked the hell out of me. And I was like, you just said that about your own people. She goes, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. So I can say that. And right. I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, all right. Fine, I'm not gonna say that. You know what I mean? Like, right. what, whatever, you can use whatever language you wanna use. I'm not gonna say that because I don't have the right to say that. I just don't. So for right. me, I'm not dying to use <laughs> racial epithets with other groups. You know but what I mean? What situations like, say for example, a, a high school teacher got suspended because she was trying to educate her classroom on the use of the N word. And so she used the actual word as part of her educational curriculum and got suspended, right? I really feel like there's some situations where it could be legitimized, like in educating younger kids about not using this word, like in just explaining to them why you shouldn't use it. I have to question, was this woman black? The you know, teacher was she, wasn't black. Why is she using it? Like, why she are you using it? So we have to get a black teacher to, to for this what one if, session. If it's a black teacher talking with black students and she's talking about the word, I feel like she had, like that's, that's a cultural thing that I don't think that we need to explain to other people. I kind of feel like no, no, to, to, word, like, not to use the word, like you're not supposed to use this word because of the yeah, history. Yeah, so the thing word. is, but, I mean, she knows good and goddamn well she's not supposed to use that word. Like, you know, <laughs> you know you're not supposed to use the word and you use the word and you get fired. What, you surprised? Are you really surprised? Like, I can't go around using racial epithets against Asians, Jews, Latin, anybody, because it's not cool. And if I get if I use it and I get fired, then my ass should have known I was gonna get fired. The N word within black culture is is such a deep history. It's such a deep and weird history. And you know, there are times where I lapse into saying it when I talk with, you know, my own people. But then I was telling, you know, on a thread, I grew up in South Jersey. I actually got called that word by racist white folks as child. It hits different. It hits different when you're being called that for real. So mm -hmm. I get it. I just don't feel like, why does anybody, why do, why do people who are non-black need to say it? I feel like you don't, you don't have any business saying it. But you don't think don't there's think a difference between being called the N-word as a slur and people just discussing it for, for like debate purposes, for example, or like, should we use this word? Like just in like a discussion, right? Not as I a get slur. it. I get what you're saying. I get, I guess for me as a black woman, it kind of feels like, like, why are you up in my scalp? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, why are you why are you all up in it? Why are you in it? I don't think you need to say the word to teach the word because at the end of the day, you're still a white person saying that word. 
Like you may be teaching and I get it. Like you may be very well-meaning, but there's going to be somebody like, I'm going to even get mad, but there's going to be somebody over here that's going to be like, I don't like that coming out of her mouth. Mm. To be smart, I wouldn't use it. Um, I, I went to uh, a predominantly black inner city high school and I, I heard you know, that word all the time, but I never felt like hearing it and hearing my friends use it and hearing my friend, even my friends call me it. Uh, yeah, in me cases. It um, well. you know, in, in an endearing way, most of the yeah. time. Um, most but, of the time. But, most of the time. <laughs> most of the time. I mean, listen, you, not, high school wasn't always uh, amazing. So, my, <laughs> no my, way. Never my, was your first bully. But, yeah, I, I never felt like hearing my friends say it and hearing other people say it gave me license to say it. And I never felt like uh, having, like, hearing it all the time that. Uh, it give, that gave me license to tell people whether or not they could or couldn't say it. You know, I I, I always used to think it, 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 it was context dependent. And also, uh, whenever I hear comics or other people say, oh, well, why can't I say it? Like, oh, you can say it. Uh, <laughs> you, you can, can absolutely you say it. It's just but... that you better be like, you just don't want to say You want to say it and you want people to be like, I don't think he's racist. Um, that's that's it. That you don't want to, uh, you don't want people like it, it. Like the whole free speech thing is a two way street. It's just like, oh, you can say one thing, and then I could be like, hey, fuck you. You know that that's all. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know you were not supposed to use the n word until I started comedy. So, Sean, I'm from Singapore. I came to America for college, and none of my friends used it. I had a couple of black female friends, but they never used it. So I went through all of college, never hearing the word. Went through all of law school, never hearing the word. No one wanted to get sued. You were in law school, girl. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> and then I went to like a, a big law firm. Obviously, no one was using the word. It wasn't until I started comedy. And then everyone was like, N word, N word. And I was like, this is like all in my face. I was like, what is going on? And like, it was only when I hear comedians like Louis C.K. saying, oh, I don't like the N word, you know, and I'm like, then that's how I learned. I only learned in like my late 20s that I wasn't supposed to use this word. Because <laughs> no one ever used it before in, in my face. She lived a privileged life. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't really used in my family, in my immediate family. Although when my uncles would have a couple drinks, it would slip out and they would tell stories. You know what I mean? Like stuff would slip out. But it was just, for me, it was always, they were using it in terms of endearment. Like you had to be really close to someone to use it in that way. But I never felt like, I never felt like a real need to really use it. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, like how am I really gonna use it? You've yeah. got a better vocabulary for terms of endearment. <laughs> yeah, but then I'll, I mean, I'll, I have a very foul mouth in general. You know what I mean? Mm. So I kind of have to, it's got to have a stop. <laughs> I mean, I can't just go full in. Okay, yeah. well, we're, we're going to move on. So hopefully, good good news, I guess, that Jeff has been finally called out for his poor behavior. I'm hoping that uh, going forward, people can find the courage within them to call out behavior before it, you know, it gets too much and not wait till um, later times. But because men are, men are, you know, crazy. So we got to call him out. Then his tweet have, was interesting, though. His tweet it, was interesting. It was his tweet. Jeff Singer's tweet when he when he was talking about what he did. It was either Facebook or Twitter when he talked about what he did Facebook. and how he's resigning. He it was really died. interesting because it was like now knowing all this, it should have been like I did this and a lot of other shit. So I'm resigning. <laughs> it should have been yeah. like and everything else. <laughs> it really came across as like a very like, hey, I'm I'm stepping down now. Please don't look into all the other stuff that I've done. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, men are from Mars. Men are crazy, and they're crazy from <laughs> Mars. <laughs> this will be a nice little switch to something a little lighter. Uh, Jeff Bezos, guys, is going to be on, not, he's not going to Mars, but he's on the next spaceship that he is creating that well, hopefully one day he wants to have it go to Mars. And it was a big fight with Elon Musk, who was going to get there first. But would you guys go on a spaceship 
Ooh, yeah, I just love that the male ego is all about this competition. You used to be like, who can get the biggest car or the hottest chick? Now it's like, who can fucking get out of space? I went, I didn't think you were going to say car. <laughs> I'm not even trying to go to Florida. I don't know if Far I'm going to go to Florida. Yeah. That's like my, yeah. my way of being inhospitable. <laughs> is it supposed um, to be hotter, colder? Like, what is, like, what's the deal with Mars? Hotter, colder? What, what's up? I think it's hotter, right? I. Uh, they're going to have their own air. They're going to go with their own air. They have no Watch. water. Yeah. I Why are we not, going? <laughs> I would not go on a spaceship, especially not with Jeff Bezos, because I know that uh, if I did, I wouldn't get any bathroom breaks. Um, <laughs> yeah, he... Uh, yeah, it, it is amazing how all of these these billionaires, they, you know... all. It, every one of them is just like, oh, I can't see any better use of my money than space exploration when, you know, there are billions of people starving. Listen, uh, a braver man than me would say that uh, we, we, we should hang them all at Wall Street, but <laughs> um, I'm not that brave. <laughs> I just find it interesting that you can't hand, you can't hand an old black lady a bottle of water in Atlanta while she's trying to vote, but these rich white men can go to Mars. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like, like, yeah, you can go to Mars, but it's just like, wow, the disparity of like where people are. You know what I mean? Like, well, let's not they're rolling forget. back voting rights in 41 states. There's over 400 bills to roll back voting rights, but these rich white men go to Mars. It's like, okay, great. Well, let's not forget this is a government funded NASA also spends how much money on sending people to outer space. So it's not just the rich white men, but they are definitely, but, but it, I don't it's, see, the, but it's the ultimate toy. I don't, I don't see no, I don't see no poor ass black women going to Mars. This is, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> when I um, see that, I'll be like, wow, we really coming up, you know? <laughs> but let's see, um, you know, who it is. Yeah, they're trying to go to Gristidis first. Uh, Jeff Bezos is a lot like um, Elon Musk in their like, uh, wealth and space exploration and uh, having all of their, their being generously started up by their parents uh, in, in the case of uh, both of them uh, with uh, Elon Musk uh, having uh, his father running uh, an emerald mine in South Africa using slave labor. Um, but yeah, I hope that uh, That's the only way you're gonna do it there. I see. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And and his whole, whole uh, trying to overthrow the Bolivian government because he wanted lithium. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, you know, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk have a lot of similarities, and one of the similarities I hope uh, is that a lot like um, Elon Musk's rockets, the one that Jeff Bezos is on. Uh, crashes and burns. Um, <laughs> oh man, I don't want this man to crash and burn. I just he could just hand out some more money. Just hand out some money. Yeah, it's scary though. I don't think I would do. I mean, I guess he totally. You know, that's the problem with um, su really super successful wealthy people. They think they're invincible uh, and above either the law or anything, so that they could get away with stuff. And he actually thinks he can get away with going into outer space. And I hope. I hope he's right, because like I like like you said, Holly. I don't want him to crash and burn either. I don't want yeah, I mean, don't wish ill will on anyone. Uh, well, maybe a few people, but I do. <laughs> no, no, there's a couple people I do. Definitely <laughs> a couple people I do. Only obituary be like, God damn it! Damn it! I thought he was sick as hell. <laughs> Before we go, Holly Harper is a star. She had I'm a, a star late yet. show. In my Soon mind, you are. In my Thank eyes. you. Um, late show with Holly Harper on Brick TV aired last night. You have four episodes. That was your yes. first one, correct? Yes. Yes. There's four episodes, and it was great. It was a lot of work, and it was a, it was a lot of fun. And you know what? I just I love comedy all around. I really do. Like I love sketch comedy. I love musical comedy, and the stand ups were great. So I I lucked out, but it really made me realize how many amazing stand ups are here in New York. Mm -hmm. Like there is just in a plethora, just a, a bucket of comics here. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna play a game in, in honor of your your show. Okay, fuck Mary Kill, right? Oh yeah, Mary F. Kill. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Rayron Kenyatti. Fuck oh! Mary Kill. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Lord have mercy. Uh, yeah, Mayron dies right off the bat. Like he's just of dead. Of course, um, <laughs> he's dead. You know, and we really should be sending him bottles of water because he sounds so thirsty, just so thirsty. <laughs> We should have sent him a bottle of water a day uh, just to quench that thirst. Uh, but Jeff Bezos and oh god, oh god, <laughs> <laughs> like, mm. I, I oh, can't even pay you enough money to fuck either of them, huh? I don't really, yeah. Mm, mm, um, oh, uh, I have my answer. Go ahead. Um, marry Jeff Bezos because he's recently single. Um, <laughs> uh, fuck Mayron. Uh, and kill Elon Musk because I think here's here's the reason why I say kill Elon Musk because uh, I don't think with with everything that's going on with me right now that the best idea for me to say on a live broadcast is kill Mayron. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Holly, best of luck to you, Jocelyn. Did you want to play the game, or are you okay? We know her answers. We know Jocelyn's answers. Uh, everyone, answers, Molly, all the answer for me. You're gonna say that you're gonna uh, you're gonna marry Elon. You're gonna f Jeff, and you're gonna kill Mayron. How did you know? I just I knew it. That. I just knew it. Somehow I knew it. Well, I just I just find Elon Musk hotter than Jeff Bezos. So if I'm married to the guy, I have to, I have to fuck him more than once. So he is I, a better looking man. Like let's be real. He is yeah, a Elon. Man. One, yeah. yeah, really better looking man. <laughs> I didn't say he was a good looking man, I said he's a better looking man. Yeah, definitely better looking. He's okay. got that, like, a bit of like, a European vibe to him. I kind of like that, you know, I mean, like, Euro fetish. Okay, well, this is going in the wrong direction. <laughs> 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 okay, guys, thank you, thank you for joining us. I'm Felicia Madison, I'm Holly Harper, <laughs> I'm Jocelyn Chia. And thank you, Sean Rosa, for joining us and sharing your story with us. Thank this you so is Broadish. <laughs>